Hiya, it's Andy Cross, back again with you for another vlog. This time I'm going to be chatting about menstrual cycle. So I imagine most of my audience is going to be female, which is a good thing because this is what it's about. It's about the menstrual cycle. And what I'm going to do is discuss and explain to you the best ways we can work fitness regime, your diet regime to work with your menstrual cycle to help for faster weight loss in terms of fat and how to get the best out of everything really um, during your goals and your journey to get into the shape of your life. So I often talk to my female PT clients, especially when they start with me and explain um, the best ways to work around their menstrual cycle with regards to diet and to exercise. Probably think it's a bit strange. Not many people know me, you know, especially those of you that are listening to this, some of you will know me, many of you probably don't. I do think it's quite funny that there's a guy here talking to you about menstrual cycle. And yeah, he knows quite a bit. In fact, I know more about the menstrual cycle than my wife and a lot of women I talk to. So I do find it quite funny, really, especially when this guy talking to you here has a beard. Um, he has a mohawk as well. If you don't believe me, I'll just give you a quick show. Look, there I am. All right. See, I've got the mohawk there. I've got the beard. All right. And I'm going to talk to you lot about the menstrual cycle. So let's get back on with it, shall we? Right. So let's get this slide back open. Right. So menstrual cycle. So with the menstrual cycle, the main hormones that we're going to be looking at and talking about tonight is estrogen and progesterone. So these are the two hormones that are released by your body during the month with regards to your menstrual cycle. And that um, will pinpoint you know, the day that you're going to actually start your period and finish these and ovulation and everything like that. So first of all, let's have a look at estrogen. So what is estrogen? Well, estrogen is, um, it's the female hormone. Um, it's what basically gives women that feminine look. So it puts, you know, the weight on your hips. It gives you breasts. It gives you that hourglass figure. OK, it, what, it is what makes women look beautiful, to be honest with you, to have that hourglass figure. So let's quickly go over what I've got on here. So what estrogen actually does to you as well. So it's an insulin sensitizing hormone. So it sort of has insulin sensitizing effects on your body. So if you've already listened to my carbohydrate vlog, if you haven't, then I suggest go back and listen to it um, maybe on another time. And I'll explain to you the effects that insulin has on your body. Many of you probably know that insulin does control blood sugar levels. But it is also a fat storing hormone as well. All right. So we talked about that in the carbohydrate one about carbohydrate tipping point and what happens if you eat too many carbs or too little, etc. Um, just really worth going back and having a look at that. So it's insulin sensitizing effects, um, which is a good thing. That's a really good thing. It speeds up the metabolic rate uh, process in your body. So it gets things moving again. Uh, it keeps your cholesterol in, in control, which I've already mentioned. It's also a cortisol antagonist. So it helps lower stress levels. All right. So that is definitely a good thing for estrogen. But however, yes, it does increase your metabolic process. However, too much estrogen can amplify fat storage. Just remember what I said about the hourglass figures, so the weight around the hips, tops of the leg, your bum, your breasts. Well, this is from estrogen. The fat in those areas, have, all, all fat has alpha receptors and beta receptors. The more alpha receptors you have, the less like, the, the slower it is to burn body fat from those areas. So estrogen does amplify the alpha receptors in those areas. You know, especially if you've got too much of it. Um, so as I just said, fat storage around the butt, hips, thighs, breasts. That's what gives women that sort of beautiful hourglass figure. 
Um, the, the other things that estrogen does for mental health, it increases serotonin. So it makes you feel good and dopamine as well. So it relaxes you. So they're all good things to keep you sort of in a good sort of mental check. Um, just going over a few things. So women who have low testosterone, estrogen, excuse me, getting a bit tongue tied there. So women with low estrogen sort of may experience uh, periods that are less frequent or could actually stop. Um, they may suffer with some hot flushes, trouble sleeping at night. Um, could have lower sex drive, mood swings, um, suffer from dry skin is another thing. And also can have dryness, particularly around the uh, vagina area. So some women uh, can also get a menstrual migraine, a bad headache right before the menstrual period because of the sudden drop in estrogen. All right. So that's the thing to be mindful of. So if a woman, let's talk about high estrogen. So I mentioned about high estrogen. Some women suffer with high estrogen. So they would experience, experience more sort of weight around the bum, the thighs, the stomach area, the hips. Again, this could cause problems with the menstrual cycle, uh, such as heavier bleeding, fatigue, again, loss of sex drive, and also feeling depressed and anxious. Um, so it's always sort of good to try and get a good balance of that, which at the end of this, I will recommend some supplementation that can help take to help sort of look after those imbalances. Funny enough, men also have estrogen in their bodies, not as much as what women do. A man with low estrogen in their body can cause excessive belly fat around the midsection and also a lower sex drive. But with higher test, uh, testosterone, estrogen, sorry, with higher estrogen in men, they can have um, infertility problems and also start having a bit more fat around their chest areas. So in fact, you know, sort of man boobs, if you like. You may have heard some men, men mention that before. Um, but that's, that's usually the problem with having too much estrogen in the male body. So the other hormone, which I said about, is progesterone. So progesterone is more of an insulin resistant uh, hormone. So this will actually cause you to gain more weight as well. Um, so you have to be careful on here. So you basically go back to that carbohydrate vlog. There's going to be more insulin put into your body to help control your blood sugars. Obviously, if there's more insulin in your body. Blood sugars is getting under control. It's going to start storing um, fat around your body. And this is part of getting you ready for pregnancy, to be honest with you, because the fat storage around the body, you start putting on a little bit more weight um, before your period. You may have experienced that. Decreases the speedy metabolism. It's starting to slow things up, preparing your body if you do become pregnant. Anti-cortisol, there's a lot of stress going on with the body as well. It doesn't really work with cortisol. It doesn't calm you down. So cortisol levels can be pretty high. Um, and low levels of progesterone can contribute towards weight gain and also depression. So progesterone, to give you an idea of how the body is actually producing this, it's secreted by the corpus luteum which is like a temporary gland that the female body produces after they ovulate so ovulation around about day 14 and it sort of lasts for the second half of the menstrual cycle this basically triggers the lining to thicken to accept a fertilized egg and it also prohibits any sort of muscle contractions um, in the uterus that could cause the body to reject any eggs so that is basically what progesterone is doing. So the progesterone is actually coming from the corpus luteum there and being secreted. Then obviously once you've had your period, that corpus luteum is no longer there. So progesterone dr drops off and estrogen starts to kick. So let's actually have a look at the menstrual cycle. So we're going to look at a normal menstrual cycle. 
I say normal, everybody's different, but what the textbooks say is it's a 28 day menstrual cycle. Some people will be longer, some will be shorter, depending on the hormones in your body. So let's just get the menstrual cycle up here. I've got it here on a chart, but I want to actually get a chart up so I can sort of um, talk it through. So just bear with me while I get this one up. There we go. This is one I put together earlier. Right, so the yellow line here, this is estrogen. If you can see that here. Okay. The blue line is progesterone. All right. So day one here, okay, let's just get a pen up here. So we've got day one, black, right, day one, okay, this point here. So this is the day of your first, when you, when you start to bleed. So basically what's happened is estrogen is starting to kick in, progesterone um, is now low. So estrogen will start to kick up throughout this first two weeks here, all right? Then up to the point of around day 14 to 16, this is when you ovulate, all right? So around this period here is when you ovulate. So basically the egg is being released. The corpus luteum is starting to grow and thicken, and that is starting to release progesterone here. So this line here, progesterone, is what is getting you ready to carry a baby. Estrogen is dropped off here. All right, so you can see progesterone in the luteal phase of the cycle is the dominant hormone. In the follicular, follicular phase, estrogen is the dominant hormone. It suddenly drops off, progesterone kicks in until the 28th day when the body figures out, yeah, you're not pregnant, so we need to get rid of this corpus luteum. Everything basically falls away and you start your period. OK, and it all starts all over again. So that's pretty much the reason why we've been put on this earth, like with any other animal, is to breed, to multiply. So the female body is absolutely amazing at doing this job with the changes in hormones, what it's doing every single month, month in, month out. OK. Right. So let's talk about what we need to do to help with weight loss during this period. So let me just quickly explain a minute. So estrogen here, progesterone, fat, more of a fat store one hormone. Okay, done. Right, some progesterone. So let's get on to the follicular phase. So exercise and diet with regards to follicular, follicular phase. So this is this phase here, the first two weeks. So you've got to remember, it's day one of your period here. This is the start of the 14 days. Now, some women will know when they ovulate. To get either a tingling sensation, a bit of pain, or they just feel it in their body that they've ovulated. I personally have no idea of that. I've never done it before, but I've heard many women say that they know. Okay, so you should have an idea. If you don't, then you're sort of going to need to get that midpoint during your cycle when you think, right, this is about the time. You may feel mood changes, you may feel things going on, and that is when we need to look at the luteal phase. Right, let's just look at the follicular phase now. So exercise and diet, what can we do to encourage more fat loss, uh, more weight control, help you get to your goals faster? So we're going to look at the first two weeks, so day one of your bleed. OK, so I know the body is getting rid of the corpus luteum. It's starting to get back to its normal weight. But there is less stress on the body. So those last two weeks, though, the body was under a lot of stress. The cortis luteum was was building up. Progesterone was high. Stress levels were a bit higher. So during this period now, we've got to remember that estrogen is high. Um, with estrogen, you have increase in serotonin, dopamine. So this is the stuff that's going to make you feel a little bit more relaxed, help your body deal with stress a bit more. All right. So there's less stress on the body. So what that enables you to do is to be able to train more intensely. 
Okay, so you'd be able to train more intensely at this time. And the sort of training you'd look at doing is stuff like HIIT training. It's a high interval, high intense interval training. Be able to do some heavier weights, Tabata classes, which is like 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Working on sessions, get to your maximum heart rate. You may be out running. You could put in some sprint intervals on a bike, do some sprint intervals on the bike, on the turbo trainer at home. You'd be able to work a lot harder and be able to work out more as well. All right, so this is the time you want to exercise more. It's the first two weeks. OK. And with that, you're also able to eat more carbohydrates. So you'd be able to eat your normal, whatever metabolic state you're in. So going back to the carbohydrate vlog, which I've done, once you've figured out your carbohydrate tipping point, you know at that point you can eat those carbs. You can also eat a few more carbs, especially on those days that you're training. Remember insulin, you're insulin sensitive. So there's less insulin being secreted. Therefore, it's less of a fat storing time for you. OK, so you can eat more. You can exercise more in those first two weeks. So eat more, exercise, uh, exercise more, eat more, eat more, exercise more, whatever way you want to put it. EMEM. -E so that is the time we do EMEM. -E so remember that. So write it down. The first two weeks, train more. Eat more if you can, especially on the days of training. Make sure you get the carbohydrates in. You don't want to be starving yourself and have the body starting to eat away at muscle. You want to be burning body fat here. OK, so OK, so let's go to the luteal phase now for exercise and diet. So remember, luteal phase is the last two weeks. So we count day one, which would be around day 14, 15 or 16 of your cycle. Day one. Is the day that the egg is released and the corpus luteum is starting to form and remember the corpus luteum that produces the progesterone in your body um, so the body is now going to be under a lot of stress there's a lot going on now all right so you need to remember the body's under a lot of stress so with that stress you're going to become insulin resistant so you're going to have higher cortisol levels higher adrenaline levels getting released. So what we really need to do, we need to cut back on the intense exercise. Yes, you can still exercise, but we need you to exercise less. So we need to start structuring your month. So the first couple of weeks, higher intensity exercise, the second two weeks, we need to really cut back. So we're looking at light weights. So you can still go to gyms with light weights. You can do some walking maybe a slow jog. We want to cut out the intervals. You could go to classes, but you're going to need to take it a lot more easier. So instead of going up to an 80, 90, 100% heart rate, we need to cut that right back to like 70, 60%. So you really need to start looking after the body and just really cut back now. Okay, just prevent those cortisol levels rising, adrenaline rising, and causing the body to go into more of a fat burning state. As well as that, we need to eat less carbohydrates. So if you remember insulin levels, where well, your, your insulin sensitivity is now resistant, so you're insulin resistant. So the carbohydrates you eat in the second half, in the luteal phase, will require more insulin to break down the glucose and the glycogen. So therefore, there's going to be more insulin in your body. And you will be in a fat storing state. So we need to eat less carbohydrates. Going back to the carbohydrate vlog, have a listen to that. Find out where your carbohydrate tipping point is. And you will probably need to reduce that by 30, 40 percent, the amount of carbohydrates, just to keep those insulin levels under check. So we need to do the ELEL, LL, whatever you want to call it, eat less exercise less you're not exercising as much so you've got to imagine you've got to cut your food back you eat less you're going to have to cut those carbohydrates back increase your veg increase your protein but cut back the carbohydrates let's go back to this chart here let's get rid of the ink marks i've already put on there 
So day one here is two weeks here, high intensity training. OK, it's a high intensity training. From here on, you want to cut everything back. Low intensity training. All right. So high intensity training here. You can eat your carbohydrates. But as soon as you hit this day here, you need to make a drastic change. Drop all the intensity of training. Start to ease up and let your body deal with what's going on internally with regards to progesterone and trying to control those hormonal levels. All right. If you carried on eating high carbs throughout the whole month, the second half of the month, this is the time where you're going to gain the pounds, especially about a week out from your period. You will start to gain a lot of pounds. A lot of women sort of say, yes, I do. You know, a few days before my period, I'm always like five pounds heavier, or two pounds heavier, or three pounds, whatever. You always find you're heavier. Yes, that's because you're storing water, you're storing extra body fat as well, just to get you ready for pregnancy. OK, so I'm just going to move on quickly with this. Um, I'm just going to cover quickly perimenopausal and menopausal as well, because I think it's quite good to get this in on this as well. I will go into this deeper on another vlog later on. But for now, let's just quickly go over perimenopause. So this is when later in life, just prior to becoming fully menopausal, you go through this period of perimenopause when the body's starting to get ready. So ovulation stops, obviously. So that means you're going to be estrogen dominant. You remember estrogen drops off once you hit ovulation, progesterone goes through the roof. OK, so it's big changes in these hormones from high to low and so forth. It's a very volatile time, especially for weight control. A lot of women find their weight going up, going down. Periods become irregular. They become very stress sensitive, not as in mentally, but also their body as well. Their body is going through a lot. There's a lot of changes going on here. So we need to try and reduce this stress as much as possible. So especially during time, during like perimenopausal, it's trying to reduce stress as much as we can. We've got to remember estrogen is high. So there is going to be weight gain, especially in the form of fat around um, the thighs, the stomach area, all those sort of areas there. So we need to sort of try thinking, right, do we need to cut carbs back? But everybody's different. I can't tell you exactly what to do on this. But on another vlog, I will go more into depth on how you can sort of try and work out what you need in order to um, maintain weight or what you need to do to lose body fat. So we're looking really on this is trying to reduce the stress levels in the body, try and get those cortisol levels down. So it's stuff like walking exercise and less or lower intensity exercise okay lighter weights you can still go out for your jogs and that but you can probably go a little bit slower by all means once a week throw in a harder run if you wish if you do thrive off that sort of thing i know i personally do i like to train hard so some of you i'd imagine also like to train hard you think well surely what why, why do i need to exercise less why do i need to do now low intensity exercise but i'm gaining body fat we're trying to get the hormones cortisol under control which has a knock-on effect with insulin because blood sugars are going up high because of cortisol so we're trying to make you more insulin sensitive rather than resistant do you understand what i'm saying so if you went out training really hard your body's going through the stress anyway cortisol is going to be going through the reef you're going to be eating those carbs Insulin is going to be absolutely through the roof. You've then got that risk of type 2 diabetes, OK, because the weight's going on. All right. So you need to sort of maybe start controlling your carbohydrates a lot more with that. So menopausal, so a menopausal state. Both the estrogen and progesterone levels have fallen. Um, weight then spreads around the body, especially the midsection now. Estrogen is lower, so you're not really going to be holding it so much around the thighs, the bum, the hips. It's going to go more to the stomach area. OK, so it's going to spread around the body. Um, you will become very insulin resistant with this. 
the body is going through a lot of stress. You're getting those hot flashes, your sleepless nights, all because of these different hormones um, are just paying havoc. One moment estrogen will be high, the next moment progesterone will be high. Just be all over the place. I'm just quickly going through this. You've got to understand I will go more into this on another blog. So again, you need to carry on trying to deal with stress. So again, it's going to be out walking. It's going to be lower intensity work uh, at the gym. It's going to be calorie reduction as well because we want to try and get those in a calorie deficit state. And certainly reduce the carbs. Do not go on a zero carbohydrate diet because that's going to put stress on your body again. You do need carbohydrates in your body. OK, so please, please, please listen to my carbohydrate one if you haven't yet to get a better understanding about that. Right. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to look at some supplementation. All right. So this is supplements. Which I have found through research that you can add in your daily regime into your meals, whatever, to help control. Um, different aspects of your hormones during the month. There'll be times of the month when you're feeling you've got cravings. There'll be time of the months when you're feeling stressed because these hormones are playing havoc. You may be estrogen dominant, so you may be holding it more around your thighs, around your bum, around your, your hips. You could be progesterone dominant. OK, so let's have a look at these here. And I, I, I really recommend looking into these. They're all natural supplements. Um, but of course, before any supplementation or anything like that, you should speak to a, a physician, um, so a nurse. The words I am giving you are good and they're sort of they've been tested and they've been proven to work but obviously you need to cover yourself so you, you need to go and talk to someone before taking any so we've got first we've got cocoa powder straight cocoa powder you can get that from anywhere and what this does it helps increase dopamine serotonin and helps prevent cravings at under 30 calories per serving so remember, estrogen helps with dopamine, serotonin. If you're menopausal, if you've got low estrogen levels, the chances are you may be feeling a little bit depressed, a little bit anxious, especially during that first couple of weeks when you're on your menstrual cycle. So I'd recommend cocoa powder. That's one of the most powerful ways. It has similar effects, believe it or not, to marijuana. Not the fact it's going to get you high, but the effects it has on your brain with regards to dopamine, serotonin. And this will help with cravings, especially if you're craving chocolates. During your menstrual cycle or any time during the month, cocoa powder. OK, so that is the first one. The next one is Vitex. Now, Vitex comes from a plant. It's a herb um, and this is very good at rebalancing your hormones such as estrogen and progesterone so if you've got low or high estrogen low high progesterone this supplementation per day 200 milligrams start with that um, this can certainly help uh, level out rebalance those hormones um, so it sort of could help with um, a fat burning around thighs the hips the bum as well all right moving on to the next one black cohosh this is from a flower uh northeast america i believe it grows and this 100 milligrams a day is very good for controlling those hot flushes hot flashes those night sweats um vaginal dryness heart palpitations tinnitus vertigo sleep disturbances nervousness irritability the feeling of being anxious all those sort of things so really this will be helping with estrogen progesterone as well so this is a very good supplementation as well so that's one to think about taking if you suffer from any of those rhodiola this is very good with stress helping your body with stress 200 400 milligrams a day i personally take this um because i do a lot um i'm basically a road cyclist so there's a lot of stress going on my body with my training um i suffer a bit with depression 
anxiety as well. So I do take this and I do believe it does actually help me. So two to 400 milligrams a day of that helps uh, with energy, stamina, strength, mental capacity, improve athletic performance. Uh, resist the effects of stress. So you can read them all there. Helps depression, anxiety, and other symptoms as well. So that's definitely another good one as well to help with the stress on the body. Green tea extract. Everyone knows that that's a pretty good one for weight loss, for fat burning. Um, that will help sort of stimulate the alpha of the beta receptors in in your body as well to help promote fat burning. Um, helps lower blood pressure as well, skin, liver, that sort of stuff as well, and helps blood sugar regulation as well. So you're sort of now looking at contributing towards insulin resistancy. Okay, with that one. So that's a good one to look at. Magnesium, three to 600 milligrams a day. Um, helps with tiredness and fatigue. That's also, um, electrolytes can help with that as well, especially at that time when you're on your your period taking some extra electrolytes to help with any losses in potassium magnesium that sort of thing um and the last one i've got here is vitamin d 2000 to 5000 iu uh day certainly helps fatigue and depression now we all know that we get vitamin d from the sun certainly as living as we do here in this country in england in northern europe Vitamin D is definitely a deficiency for a lot of people around here in this country. If you live around the equator, then you have a higher rate of vitamin D. You won't need so much of this as a supplementation. So I highly recommend taking this, even if you don't, throughout the whole year. And if the sun's out, try and expose as much sun. Obviously, you're using sunblock. Use sunblock. I've got to say that cover myself here but enjoy the sun get yourself out there as well that would certainly help with depression i know that this time of year it's autumn at the moment no it's not autumn where are we that's winter it's coming towards the end of winter the days are shorter there's more darkness and you can quite often feel quite low and depressed this time of year so getting the vitamin d will certainly help you with that However, you do need to speak to your GP with regards to any hormone replacement if you feel that you need extra estrogen or progesterone to sort of help regulate your periods. Okay. Obviously, your periods are all over the place. This can be down to a few things low estrogen, low progesterone, high or high. It could be the fact that you're on some contraception. So a progestin patch, um, implant, pill as well, um, estrogen, or whatever, just to help, which would sort of prevent the body from going through that ovulation. So, yet yeah, being on certain contraceptives can affect um, your fat storage, mostly to... Um, increase fat storage around the body so just be mindful for that um, there's just one more other thing i just want to quickly go on if you really want to concentrate on you've got high estrogen levels so you've got a lot of weight around your legs your bum your hips and you really want to work on those areas obviously taking the supplementation as discussed here but when you exercise do a lot more leg work do keep covered up as well keep covered up i quite often say to some women Wear a pair of tights underneath your tracksuit bottoms or whatever, two pairs of leggings, I don't know, just to get more blood to that area. There's less blood supply to the fat areas. And if they're dominant in the alpha receptors, so not releasing so much fat, you've got to imagine we need to get more blood to that area to promote more fat loss from that area. All right, so just try and encourage it a little bit more. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you anymore. I hope that was informative and any questions you've got my website there you can certainly have a look on there um which i'll just get up right at the beginning of this slides there you go web address there you can get in touch if you want any personal training or 
If you want me to train you online, I can certainly do that. Help with diets, DNA testing as well. I do that to see what diet works for you and the best way for you to train or through DNA testing. I also offer 3D body scanning um, on um, measuring fat and muscle within the body. So certainly ask away, subscribe to my channel. There's gonna be more vlogs coming up. Um, the next one's going to be on exercise and what exercise does to our bodies, different type of training, etc. like that. Okay, it's been great. My name's Andy Cross, Cross Personal Training, Melton Keynes. Take care, stay safe.